Hello, I'm David Hunt, CEO and founder of the Hyperion Cleantech Group and your host for the Leads in Cleantech podcast. Uh, great to have you joining us again. Um, one of the things, or two of the things actually, that uh, we're most uh, here on the podcast from entrepreneurs in particular is the challenges, the dual challenges. Firstly, of fundraising. Uh, that's always a challenge, and uh, we, we often have uh, guests from the VC community to to discuss that. And the other is talent, access to talent, and it's a little while since we've discussed that particularly. So this week, I've actually invited along a guest who is the MD and co-founder of Fully Charged Recruitment, part of the Hyperion Clintech Group. And we're going to share with you some of the ideas and thoughts around what are the challenges that uh, founders face, how they can address building high-performing teams. And we'll also turn that around a little bit and have a little bit of a conversation around candidates in terms of if you're a candidate looking for uh, upscaling your position or looking to get into the uh, to the clean tech sector, some advice that might be useful for you. So firstly, Steve, welcome to your hometown, Liverpool, and to the studio. Uh, good to have you with us. Indeed. Thanks for having me on. Good to be here. So firstly, it's good to perhaps just share a little bit of context. So if I put my Hyperion executive search hat on, we work primarily with uh, you know, post-investment startups and scale-ups to hire uh, board-level C-suite VPs heads off, and Fully Charged was created between us to address the mid to senior market. So perhaps before we start, people know a bit more about me. Share us a little bit of what your journey to the point at which we decided to, to create Fully Charged. Yeah, sure. Um, trying to think where to start. So let's go back to 2012, graduated from university with a master's degree in planning. Always fascinated about how towns and cities were shaped, um, particularly the infrastructure side of things. Um, didn't quite work out post-university. All the jobs were down in London, just got a mortgage, settled here in Liverpool with uh, my fiance at the time, now wife. I had to look somewhere else and kind of fell into recruitment, to be honest, um, like like most, most of, like most yeah. of us do. Um, kind of fell into the industry, um, cut my teeth in the oil and gas sector. Mm -hmm. So working with big energy companies all over the world, from Kazakhstan to South Korea to Azerbaijan to the Middle East. Um, it was great, don't get me wrong, cut my teeth learning the industry, the trade, but quickly realised that, was it for me? Probably not. Um, and this is someone who, took a little bit of time and we'll touch on that with candidates in yeah. terms of like actually a bit of soul searching. Where do you want to be with your life, with your career? For me, I think I, I wanted to be a physio at first and then I don't know what else I wanted to be. I wanted to be an architect and then I went through loads of different scenarios. What did I want to be? Didn't ever see me as a recruiter or someone that was going to be co-founded and later launched a recruitment business. Um, but quickly, once I was embedded in the sector and once I was recruiting for the energy sector, I realised I wanted to be part of almost like a bigger mission where we were actually doing good. Yep. Um, always been a people person, uh, worked in retail, selling wedding rings actually, and, and, <laughs> and helping people who were tying the knot and getting engaged and seeing yeah. the smile on their faces and seeing young lads and young girls coming in, picking in and uh, picking rings and so on. It was great. And seeing that sort of almost direct impact you were having on better than making yeah, yeah. people happy. Um, and within oil and gas recruitment, I wasn't really seeing that. It was more transactional. So I wanted to become part of something that was much more impactful. Um, you knocked on my door, I think it was December 2018. Good, good um, memory, yeah. Yeah, December 2018 at the time. Just thinking about what to do. Um, like just had a little boy. Um, and you talked to me about your mission around working with companies that were really pushing the needle forward on clean energy, clean yep. mobility. And it just resonated. Um, come from a family of automotive heads. Grandfather spent 42 years at Ford, Jaguar Land Rover. Dad spent 39 years. I think my brother's almost on two decades now. I've never been a petrol head by any means, but they were always talking about hybrid vehicles and the step towards electric vehicles. Um, when I was in um, the previous company, we actually beyond the oil and gas, we created a new um, automotive division, yeah, yeah. working with a lot of the main manufacturers who at that time, I think back in 2016 it was, talking about, you know, full battery electric vehicle projects, um, hybrid projects were fast becoming a thing of the past and it was all about EVs. And I just knew this is, this is something I want to be involved in. So took the leap of faith to go from the corporate world to join a startup and um, yeah, four years down the line, I think we are last week, it was the anniversary. Was. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, great. 
it's a, a long journey. But I think that's one of the key things. There's a lot of learnings, and people don't often realize that there's, um, you know, we we are, you know, I guess we're now into scale up phase beyond the startup as an organization, but we work so much exclusively at both fully charged recruitment and at uh, Hyperion Executive Search with post investment startups. So let's look at some of the unique challenges that they face. So um, let's take the last, you know, six months, uh, 12 months since, for, since founding fully charged recruitment. What have been the key? challenges that you found from talking to clients and what have been the key areas where they've really drawn on our experience and support? Yeah, it's a, I mean, there's there's lots of challenges. I think one of the key ones is um, similar to IP in the business, albeit not at the executive and leadership level. We're still working to support companies with key functions and disciplines and roles within those fu- functions that are going to be crucial to their scale up. And, um, you know, young founders, young entrepreneurs that are, you know, the, the driving force behind these businesses, they, they've, they've, it, it's sort of that startup scale up phase, isn't it? And it's a big transition. A lot of people throw away comments, think a startup is the same as a scale up yeah. and it's not, and we can touch on that, but, um, they think, you know, they can just stick a job advert on LinkedIn and on the website and, you know, they sit back, put the feet up and they're going to get, fantastic applicants and in reality that doesn't happen um what they typically get is you know there might be that opportunity where there is that rare gemstone that applies and great they tick the boxes but nine times out of ten they get a lot of redundant applications that just aren't fitting the bill and i think where we come in is we understand the landscape um you know we are either closely aligned or from within the industry, you know, yourself and Ross, you've worked in the solar renewable energy space. Um, I've got a, a pure passion for it. I've been involved loosely within the automotive sort of transition from, you know, my granddad telling me stories of the past with Ford to how, you know, vehicles are being developed to today. And I think because we are, I like to say fine tuned or embedded to the industry, we get to know who is the who within the industry. Um, we speak out, we visit, we exhibit, we sponsor, we attend a lot of industry events. We're very close to the sector so yeah. that we can actually give our clients a lot of insight into, you know, if they're looking to build out a sales team, who are the best salespeople within the industry? If they're willing to, you know, invest in, you know, rolling out a, a network of charging infrastructure, for example, who are the people that are going to help them do that? We're that close to the industry. I think we've got a bit more of a, a, a grasp than, than they have because, they're founders, they're trying to raise capital. They're trying to, you know, nine times out of 10, they haven't even got job descriptions. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's proper green field for them. I think that's the challenge, isn't it? So many of our, uh, so many businesses are founded by great entrepreneurs wearing so many hats. And if we look at some of the pain points, the key pain points that we hear and, and, and you hear also is around, you touched on it there, effectively time. You know, time. Pe- pe- yeah. people lack both experience, but they also lack the time and don't necessarily always realize how time consuming mm-hmm. it is to go through a recruitment process. So um, a- again, the feeling of that as a, as a pain point, what are some of the ways in which your clients are feeling that Pain. Often they come to you at what stage? They've tried adverts, they've tried other things. What kind of experiences are, are they coming with? It's a mix. Sometimes it's they don't know where to start. You know, they've got an idea of a, a, a role that's critical to the business. But, you know, typically within that startup environment, you know, it's, it, it's not a pigeonholed role. Mm-hmm. It's a role that's probably four or five roles rolled into one. <laughs> yeah. So we can help them actually take a step back and, and map out, okay, what do you really need? Yeah. Um, other times it's, you know, they've, they, they've tested the market. They've gone out there. They've, again, as we touched on before, they've put an advert out and not really seen the responses and realized that, you know, that isn't the silver bullet solution. They need help. Um, other times, you know, they, as you mentioned before, they, they just don't have the time if they're busy trying to work on a, the evolution of a product or, you know, the busy fundraising, trying to make sure that, you know, the business is, is, in, in, in a cash positive position they just haven't got time yeah. to go and interview people within the marketplace um to write a job description to sift through cvs so we take a lot of that pain away um and then complement that with our knowledge of the industry to help yeah. them get the right people it's an ironic thing that i talk about quite often is the fact that everybody understands that without great people you've got no business no matter how good your product is no matter how much money you've got in the bank no matter how you know good market fit that you have but without good people you just you, you, you scoop it down you so exactly. um and that's what often surprises us that some people really get that and they come and seek expertise and, and clearly their clients we work with as they scale and that's always good fun um others it's almost like a, a last resort where you 
tried these other ways, as you say, and, and come to realize that actually talent acquisition is a real challenge and mm. it takes time and dedication and resource. Whether you do that through a recruiter, whether you do it, whatever way you choose to do it, to get the right people, mm -hmm. takes a lot of resource. And it's one of those things where people don't fundraise with the same mentality. You know, people put a lot of time and effort into their pitch decks, well, most do, um, but, but don't necessarily put the time and effort into, I should say, job descriptions or how the company culture looks or how the, the job description reads and all these kinds of things. And there's that, that, that's the key thing I find. That there's, there's a lack of knowledge or a lack of understanding of just what it takes Mm -hmm. to get really good people on board into a business and the difference between an A player and a B player to your business? Oh, ma ma massively. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of issues we see with clients is, you know, that they're small. You know, a lot of our clients, for example, are in some cases less than 30 people and yep. culture's everything, you know. They, they, they've sort of grown at an organic rate because they've, they, you know, they've, they've asked, you know, who do you know that could do this job? And it's, 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 almost like a, a tight knit lean operation, a family feel to it. But then as they're trying to transition to that next next level, yeah. the big thing, you know, someone can look great on paper, but culturally they might not be too well aligned. Yeah, yeah. And that's the biggest <clears throat> challenge as companies are scaling, making sure that they can kind of retain that culture. They're bringing people in who want to be part of their mission, want to be part of their story, aren't going to come in and upset the apple cart. So again, for us, we take a lot of that pain away. But the problem is, is, Companies assume, a lot of companies we've worked with in the past, assume everyone wants to come and work for them. Yeah. Um, and in reality, you know, no one knows who they are. Um, they perhaps haven't got any collateral. The website's just a, you know, a, a generic landing page that hasn't really been formed or built out. So, you know, when we're trying to take the A players who yeah. typically are happy in the role, established working for the business that, you know, leaving hasn't even crossed their mind how are we going to convince them to come across yeah, yeah. and join this unknown scrappy startup that no one knows about so we we do a lot of helping clients actually build out their collateral and one thing i always say um to founders and hiring managers that i'm working with is why should someone come and work for you and if yeah, yeah. they can't answer the question then yeah, yeah there's work to be done absolutely yeah and it's one of the, i call it the baby syndrome it's like you know when you've got your baby as, as you know as a parent your baby is by far the best and most beautiful baby <laughs> yeah. that ever existed, right? Um, and, and often founders have this mentality of, yeah, everyone wants to come to work because we're doing really cool stuff. And yes, you are. But there's 20 other companies doing really cool stuff as yeah. well who maybe you know, have different packages. They may have different stages of evolution. And again, it's about telling that message that, as you say rightly, we work with to, to try and brand the employer, to, to demonstrate just where they're at. Honestly, you know, without, as you say, we don't want to... Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, sugarcoat anything, but this yeah. is where the company's at. But this is exactly the opportunity. And that, I think, makes the difference as soon as you can tell the story. And I often think of ourselves as storytellers. And do you agree with that? Definitely. We're, we're you know, I think we're marketeers. You know, we um, we do. We help elevate companies' brands. We, we input on, you know, and I think any recruiter that really wants to add value to the client needs to be honest and i've had difficult conversations with clients in the past when i've said to them look you, your job description's pretty awful yep. your, your website's pretty awful um how am i going to tell your story if the collateral that exists today yeah is is substandard so yeah it's helping them along that journey and we are storytellers mm -hmm. um i'm someone certainly who, who, who I think I used to go and see a movie when I was younger and my mum wouldn't need to go and watch it because I'd come back, <laughs> I'd come back and sit on the kitchen worktop and talk her through the, the start to finish. Yeah. We are storytellers and yeah. I think that's, again, what, what makes us so successful. But it's so fundamentally important, as you say, to tell the story. And another example, uh, with, when I obviously won't mention the client, but who would, Jen, because I want to touch on diversity because you've had a big part to play in our, 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 our efforts in that area. But uh, a, a client who generally wanted to, to increase the diversity and have a balanced shortlist, ideally more females, but certainly a balanced shortlist. And uh, very quickly into the conversation, we realized that the job description was meh. But as soon as you go into the website, it's just a bunch of white guys. Uh, and everything visually pointed at a very male-dominated environment. And, and all these, some people don't often think about those assets or collateral, as you refer to it, that actually supports the message. It's okay to say something, but you have to be able to demonstrate that it exists. 100%, 100%. I mean, there's been many instances where, um, you know, we've been approached by a client uh, and they've said, you know, and a lot of people just talk, when when they talk diversity, they yeah. talk male and female. There's a lot more to it than that. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we, we've we had many conversations with clients. Again, we won't mention 
names, but they've said to us, like, we're, we're a team of six white men in grey suits. Like, we need to diversify. Like, yeah. we need to attract more women. Um, okay, well, what are, what are you doing to attract more, more females into the business? Because when I go on your website, for example, yeah. uh, you know, you, all, 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 the, all the, the, the headers and the graphics that you use, it's, just, suits, yeah. it, it's just men. And it is, it's difficult, you know, in, in, in coming from engineering and automotive and manufacturing industries that I cut my teeth in, they are male dominated. Um, and it is, it's a challenge that exists today and we'll touch on it, but it's something that we've tried to address. And again, we've helped our clients like understand, okay, well, um, what do we need to do to make your business a bit more inclusive? Because it's all right putting a little statement on the bottom of your website or saying, you know, we're an equal opportunity employer. Yeah, yeah. But what are you doing to demonstrate that? I think it's exactly that, isn't it? There's a, there's a friend of ours called Helen Czerski, who's a scientist and a presenter on Fully Charged Channel and, uh, and an author and, and various other things. But was talking to her about it and she was saying it's almost like having the door open and saying, no, we're open isn't enough. It's how the furniture looks inside and what she was getting at. It's not a case of just saying, hi, we're open for business and we're open to people from a gender diverse or, a, or whatever diversity background. It has to look and feel that way. And that's the biggest challenge, actually, going back to your point, is when a client, a company isn't that and wants to be it, that can be the hardest transition. It's a case of how do you, you don't want to lie or pretend, but how do you create that environment where it becomes much more welcoming. And that's, I think we've had a few challenges with with, with a few sort of mutual clients along that journey and got there eventually. Yeah. Um, so let's touch on that because again, I, in the podcast recently with Rubina Singh, we, 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 we were proud to announce that with, uh, as a group, we had uh, hired 42% of females last year in a male dominated environment, but that didn't happen overnight, is it? And you were one of the key sort of uh, practitioners who supported a lot of your clients who were able to obviously hire far more balanced uh, uh, shortlist and, and hire more females. Can you perhaps share some of the key learnings that you experienced helping our clients on this journey? Yeah, it wasn't an easy one. It was tough. Um, it, it, it's, it's like with anything really, you know, the clients got to want, want to be an inclusive employer and they, they've got to want to be diverse for the right reasons, not just for meeting a quota yeah. or perception and how they how, how people view the business, you know, they've got to want to. And um, there's a lot of naivety, you know, a lot of companies will come to us and say like, we, we want a female, but there's no thought behind it. Well, why, why, why do you want a female? Um, so it's actually working with businesses to understand, you know, what, what does the, the landscape in terms yeah. of the headcount, the current workforce look like right now? Um, why would you benefit for a female or why would you benefit for, for you know, someone of a, a, a different background or belief or whatever? And a lot of them don't have the answers, yeah. um, but it's clear to see that there are a bunch, a bunch of white men. Mm -hmm. So it's actually just trying to get them to see the value that having um, diversity in the, in, in the, in the workforce can, can kind of, it, it can help them see things from a different perspective. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's difficult. It's difficult for me to explain. Um, but I know, you know, I know working in environments where it's been male dominant in the past, everyone agrees with each other and everyone's got the same belief and there's no one there to challenge the status quo. Yeah. And I think sometimes you need to mix things up a little bit because it's it's as you said before, you know, your baby's the cutest baby in the world. Well, it's not really. And it's getting someone in to actually look at, okay, well how can we do things differently? And if everyone thinks we're all doing things the right way and the best way, well, nothing's going to change. Yeah, yeah. So it's bringing a new new perspective to the workforce, really. Yeah, I think sometimes you touch on something there. I think often, you know, and rightly so, with, with good intentions, VCs often say you need to diversify your board in particular, or you need to diversify your workforce. And, and uh, the, the, I don't think there's anyone, certainly that I've come across that's duplicitous about that. I think mm -hmm. they, they, they get that they want to. But to your point, they don't really understand exactly what, what? they're going to get or the mm -hmm. what or the how. And it's how you can actually create first and foremost an understanding of why and how you're going to support somebody coming into your organisation, particularly if you are either very male-dominated or ethnically dominated in one area. How do you support somebody coming on board and, uh, and having the right mindset and the right tools and resources and the right flexibility actually to key. do things a little bit differently than you've done in the past flexibility is key i mean we've 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 placed candidates in the past um with re different religious beliefs and you know the the rigid nine to five thirty or nine till six p.m um you know 
ancient way of working just didn't fit with their, you know, their regime of, of, of actually taking a bit of time out of the business to go and pray. Mm. Or again, with uh, with women in particular, you know, around, you know, taking maternity leave or going away and having the, those childcare commitments I see with yeah. my, own, my own wife now, you know. Um, fortunately, she works for a really flexible employer and she's able to, you know, be a mother as well as, you know, be a leader of her business. And yeah. Often those companies that approach us and say, you know, we need to diversify, they've got very rigid processes and they've got very rigid policies. So yeah, yeah. flexibility is a key one. In order to be inclusive, they need to, you know, look at, you know, the ways they, the ways in which they've been doing things and how they are structured to accommodate diversity because yeah. often that's not the case, doesn't exist. Yeah, no, that's very true. And, and again, something that's really important to, to us as an organisation and I think it's really important to, to any founder or to any company that's looking to generally scale in today's world, clean tech very much obviously a global uh, sector and industry, as you say, is diversity beyond gender. Gender is quite easy because in, easy in the sense of it's very visible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's less visible sometimes for, for other, you know, ethnic, sort of uh, areas of diversity, whether that's ethnic diversity, sexual diversity, all these other things. And I think it's really... Um, having the awareness and understanding of the benefits that that can bring to an organization in terms of actually addressing the status quo, having different perspectives and having different ideas, particularly in a global industry. I mean, we're a small team and I think we've got four or five nationalities in the business. Yeah. Um, so it's just having those different mindsets is, is to us, I know to me has been really beneficial, but again, to, to a client perspective, Diverse is not, as you say, it's just about how many women can get onto the board. As much as that's all important, is a case of how do we challenge or create an environment where there are different experiences, whether it's social economic experiences, gender experiences, sexuality experiences, all these kinds of things. And and, and that sometimes frustrates me that, that there's such a focus on, are we just tick box, let's get some women on the shortlist. Yeah. And, and sadly, that's, that's what exists today. You know, it, it, it's a tick box exercise and it shouldn't be the case you know there's so much value having people from different walks of life and you know mm -hmm. getting their perspectives on things partly for me i remember when i was um still cutting my teeth in the industry i wanted to you know i i work locally in liverpool you know every day we come in the office it was just a bunch of guys talking about football it was very male dominated and for me i wanted to remove myself and get a different perspective on things so i went and lived in a different part of the uk for six seven months and then i wanted to take it to the next step and went and lived abroad um and you know i was working with people from all four corners of the world and you know it was mixed you know it was it was it was it was male female it was people with different religious beliefs and it opened my mind so much than you know that little bubble that i was in for the better yeah. because you know you, 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 you you're learning different things from people and getting their viewpoints rather than just the, the same five five lads around the same desk talking yeah, yeah. about the same things and sharing the same viewpoints every day yeah i think we're quite blessed because clearly we work exclusively in clean technology which is you know it's by far from perfect but it is a more progressive Definitely. mindset amongst most people i've got a friend who runs a search firm in in, in more generic business areas and again they often face this challenge of it does become a little bit more of a, of a tip box mm -hmm. let's move on and touch a little bit uh, around other sort of challenges and you touched on this a little bit before because we, there is in clean tech you know a small talent pool and we all know the growth of the sector is enormous there, there's everybody's you know, there's lots of money around despite what the you know last six months there's still a lot of money and vcs invest in um so the talent pool is much smaller than the the demand and so often you start to see or experience where people have fallen short or they'll look at a piece of paper or LinkedIn profile that says, you know, EV charging or solar or whatever the sort of the terminology might be. And other recruiters who are less experienced or, or internal recruiters or, or, or founders, they'll, they'll jump onto this. But the, the cultural thing you touched on very briefly, I'd like to discuss that a little bit more around really understanding is this individual not only equipped to be out with the skill set, but equipped with the right mindset to work in a four man, five man person, 30 person business. Mm -hmm. And that's the, 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 the challenge of often, isn't it, around just getting the people who can adapt. If they've been with a, a Siemens, uh, can they work with a 30-person business? And obviously, sometimes the answer is yes, but more mm -hmm. often than not, it's probably no. So yeah. it's some of those, uh, like educating the client around some of these things, around understanding that, yeah, what's on paper isn't necessarily the answer that you need. Yeah, no, exactly. It's, it's, it's you know, as you said, if someone's worked all their life in a big corporate beast of a business is it going to be a culture shock for them to go and work in a 10 person startup uh, where there's no processes um you know their job isn't just 
you know, it, uh, with a box around it. It's not pigeonholed, they're not in silo. You know, I've, I've got my own experiences, I'm sure you've got, you know, in my role, I'm the recruiter, I'm the salesperson, I'm the accountant, I'm the marketeer. Um, <laughs> in that sort of startup environment, you, you, you've got to sort of be, be willing to take on other task, tasks, be willing to step outside of your comfort zone, yeah. um, be the person that says, you know, yeah, I'll roll my sleeves up. I don't know the answers, but I'm willing to learn and, yeah. and, and, and you know, can cope with highly ambiguous environments where it, you know, it literally can change overnight and the goalposts can shift like almost intraday. Um, it's, it's, it's getting businesses and hiring managers to see the value that those sort of broad transferable skills rather than, because we get it all the time. We get a business that says, you know, we need, 10 years solar installation experience or we need 10 years experience working in battery storage and it makes me laugh because there's a handful of people maybe that have got 10 years experience yeah. working in ev for example <laughs> um you're just not going to get it realistically so it's it's looking at sort of the the mindset the the motivations the the you know the the breadth of experience that someone can bring yeah. and you know 99% of the time people are like the 75% there they just need to learn your product yeah. they just need to you know get acquainted with your business and hold the hand and get them through that bit and you know those hiring managers that we've seen that have actually came to us embrace with an open that. mind yeah. and embraced it we've seen people really saw and really take off in the careers whereas whereas you know hiring managers that have been rigid and they've said you know we want someone with 10 years ev experience typically you know they haven't really kicked on and they're still trying to find those people yeah. they're still trying to access that talent that as you say that you know the, the pool's very very small right now and that's which will come on partly why we set up the business was to to bring people from adjacent and industries outside of our core sectors so that we can cope with this demand yeah. um, because there's a massive shortage there is a there's a, there's a well known phrase you no know, higher for, for aptitude not for skills because you yeah. can train skills and there's a lot of truth in that but for, for me and for what I've found is around it's higher for flexibility which is you've touched on obviously there's a skill a level of skill and intelligence but the ability to adapt to chaos, working with startups or no, as you say, you know, things pivot, things change, funding scenarios change, products evolve differently. Every, you know, it's that ability to be able to think, actually, yeah, I'm out of my comfort zone now, but yeah, I've got this mindset that says I'll deal with it. Mm -hmm. And that's not easy to, well, certainly you can't see that from a piece of paper. No. Uh, and uh, it sometimes takes a little bit of digging uh, as, a, as a recruiter to, to really understand, do they have that flexibility to be able to work in this environment, which, which I call for a lot of our clients, positive chaos. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it, there's a purpose and there's a mission, but it's also pretty chaotic and yeah. it's not for everybody, right? So. No, it's not. It's not. And it, it, you know what? It's hard. It's hard looking at a CV or looking at a LinkedIn profile. It's it's hard to, well, you can't, you, you can't see from words on paper if someone's just got it. Like if they've got that graft, if they've got that grit, if you, you know, if they'd be willing to roll the sleeves up you can't tell that without speaking to people and yeah. i think we do a great job like getting under the skin of people's motivations and you know a lot of people that naturally come to us and say i want to work in clean tech i want to work in clean energy how can i do it yeah i think we're as we're storytellers on one hand so we can we can we can you know help tell our client's story but on the other hand i think we're very good judges of characters so we can actually you know we can tell if someone's being genuine, we've been doing it long enough. You know, if someone's just trying to chase a quick buck and they're not really in it for the right reasons, I think we can suss them out. But generally, with good judges of characters, we can see people that really want to be in this industry and want to kick on in their career and really want to lead a career with purpose and impact. Yeah. And largely because that's we've been there, we wanted to do it. So yeah. it makes it easier. But yeah, it's still a challenge today. Yeah. But following on from that, because that's again one of the things with with, with high peer and the frustration is it's brilliant because but it's also a frustration that because we're a headhunter, essentially, people always want previous experience and, yeah. and we're good at finding that previous experience with a global network, all that kind of stuff. Um, but the reason we created a fully charged recruitment was because the talent pool isn't growing as fast as the demand is growing. Mm -hmm. And coming back to that part of the conversation around so many people who want to be working with impact. They want to go be able to go home and tell their, their families or even just tell themselves, today I did something that made a difference. I wasn't working for an oil and gas company, a tobacco company, a defense company. And you know, you, you, there are valid 
reasons for people to do valid things, but but so many people want to make a difference. And that's why we had that conversation. We created the fully charged business. So tell me how that has been perceived in the marketplace with and the and the uh, the the efforts you've made to be able to do that, find the right people without necessarily a perfect on paper background for, for, for clients. Yeah, I mean firstly there's 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 no greater fulfillment for me than than helping people. Um and that's helping people actually land careers that are generally going to make them happy. Um, helping our clients land people that are generally going to go on and spearhead their growth. It's it, it's it's why I got into recruitment to help people. Um, it, it it's for me. It's 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 you know it's finding people that really want to make a difference and really kick on is why we why we founded the business in the first place. Um, there's a small pool of talent. We needed to grow it. Tate and people, we were approached, you know, at the various events yeah. that we attend, we were approached by so many people. How do I get into the industry? Yeah. What do I do? And when you're recruiting at the C-suite and when you're recruiting at leadership level, as you say, we're headhunters, we're taking people from the, from the industry. They've got the skills already. They're advanced in the career. And for me, it was a real bug. It was a real gripe of mine that, I was just giving advice and pointing people in the right direction, but not really, yeah. not really directly helping them. So I wanted to do more, and I think that's why we set up the business to to get more people in. And it's been it's been received greatly from many of our clients because I think we touched on it before. We, we the diversity piece has been a real success for us, but I don't know the exact stats. But taking people from non clean tech sector and yeah. bringing them into the sector has been a real a real success for us as a business, and it's. As you say, it's people that are working in industries where they're just turning up every day, mm -hmm. yeah. and they want to be doing so much more. And I think it, it 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 must be this generation as well. We're seeing a lot in the news about you know climate change, and we're seeing a lot in the news about you know the issues with um, you know fossil fuel and oil and gas exploration and. My cousins, my nephews, my nieces, you know, younger people that are in university now are in the family. They don't want to be working for oil and gas companies. Yep. They want to be doing something that's much more meaningful. And for me, helping them get into the industry is, is great. It's just actually, I get it. A lot of clients, you know, there's a lot of competition in the market right now. And a lot of our clients right now, you know, they're competing against other businesses. There's, you know, I think last year there was um, in public EV infrastructure, there was 33% growth. And over the next 12 months, we're going to see that network double. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of competition from overseas. There's, you know, new startups that are pulling in obscene amounts of investment. People are scaling fast. And there's a, almost an element of panic. Panic. So mm -hmm. hiring managers are going to market and say, we, we need, you know, the best candidates in the market. They're not willing to invest in people who could be great, but they they just haven't got the time or can't really, it's short-sighted. They, they're looking at these people and yeah. thinking transferable skills aside, they've not got the EV infrastructure experience or they've not got the solar experience. I can't invest in them. Um, it's just getting clients to take a, a step back and just think, okay, well, they might not be a plug and play. They might not be able to hit the ground running right now. Um, but you know, if we just invest in these people, we're going to nurture, you know, the yeah. next generation of talent. And it's, it's a challenge because yeah, people want results now. Um, they're not willing to, to invest. Yeah. One of the, the downsides of that is, uh, and I've seen in, in various markets that I've worked in and very much now, particularly as you say, the, the growth, particularly around EV charging infrastructure, but most of the clean tech areas is, is, is that growth leads to people wanting to take people from the market and then you just get this merry-go-round where people will, will move for a short period off. of time. Uh, there's wage inflation, which we've seen. Massively. You know, I think even the last year we've probably seen 20, 30 percent wage inflation on a, on a lot of easy. roles. Yeah, easy. Uh, over and beyond, obviously, the, the bigger issues of, of inflation globally, that wage inflation. So, people are taking, paying over the odds for people who are sometimes average but have a bit of experience. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. Whereas, you know, if you invest in someone that's perhaps from a, you know, a bit of a bit of a stagnant industry um, or hasn't got, you know, ten years of experience, maybe they've got none or maybe they've got three years experience you know you can get much more affordable resources but people that generally are chomping at the bit you know yeah. I've, I've, I've i've i was working with a chap recently who for 18 months he was trying to get his foot in the door and 
I was sharing information on events that he should attend. I was sending articles. I was sending, you know, links to webinars. I was just trying to help him. And I actually went on and placed the chap and it was great. But I think we, we introduced this profile to about four or five different clients, just like have a coffee, see what he's all about. And I haven't got the time, Steve. I haven't got the time, Steve, or he doesn't fit what we're looking for right now. There's a lot of like reluctance to just yeah. have a conversation. And the one client that did have a conversation, we were blown away by, by him. Yeah. And he's come in and he's, he's, I think he's been promoted since he joined and he's flying. Yeah, yeah. And it's just taking the time to have conversations. And we touched on it before. A lot of our clients don't have that time. So it, it's kind of a, 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 a rock and a hard place. Yeah, and it's also an interesting thing. It, it does work at different scales. And as you know, we're, won't again won't mention names, but there's 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 a there's a chap that I spoke to first three or four years ago, again, experienced executive that wanted to get into the into the clean tech sector, couldn't get an opening anyway, anywhere. And I, I helped him, as you say, as we often do with pointing him and guiding and, and we'll touch on that in a moment, to to get his first role in, in the sector, which wasn't for us by the way, but he got his first job in the sector. We we helped him to do that. And now with two roles down the line, uh, and, and about four years down the line, he's the CEO of a business. <laughs> and he's obviously now you know a client. So um but but let's flip the conversation briefly then to look at some of the things that candidates can do if they are in one of the sunset industries or they are wanting a, a more impactful role on their thinking well how do I stand out because I haven't got 10 years of EV experience haven't got five years in solar I have I don't know the ins and outs of batteries how do I make myself attractive mm -hmm. to people in my sector so maybe some of the experiences some of the some of the sort of tips that you give to candidates like the one you just mentioned yeah, um, there's there's lots of different tips, and I think if you, and we we can share the links. But on our LinkedIn page, we ran a campaign recently, just very simple but very effective tips how how people can elevate themselves and stand out. And I was chatting last week to a gent who's got thirty years experience working in the semiconductor industry. He's still got a lot of skin in the game and wants to get involved. But you know, when we looked at his LinkedIn profile and when we looked at his CV, yeah. It was one dimensional uh, and he won't mind me saying this, we won't mention names, but certainly there was nothing on there that told potential employers that he was passionate about EV, that he wanted to be in the sector, that, you know, he'd driven EV for many years. So we, we actually tweaked on his bio and his personal profile and we shared some thoughts on, you know, what 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 podcasts can he tune into to learn about yeah, you know, yeah. the latest trends in the industry. Um, we talked about what events were coming up in the calendar that he can attend. Um, there's many free events out there that people can, you know, just just rock up to. And, yeah. you know, within these events, you know, the, 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 the speakers, the exhibitors, the people out there that are within our industry, um, you know, just go and have conversations with people. I think, you know, for us, I always say, well, there's a few things. Um, Make yourself stand out and that's, you know, sitting back, having a look at your CV. Um, you know, if you want to be in a particular industry, you know, put a cover letter together, um, tailor your application, um, put in the buzzwords, put in the keywords, put in, you know, what motivates you, what excites you. Have a think about really how your skills translate yeah, yeah. to the demands of the industry. Put it down on paper. Um I'd say the next thing is is again being being close to the industry. So if you want to get in there, you've got to be close to it. You've got to understand yeah. what's happening. So keeping up to date with you know the latest regulations, keeping up to date with the latest news. You know who's hiring, who's growing, who's scaling, um, making connections. Um, we talk about it all the time. Always be networking, like network, yeah. network the hell out of the industry. You know if you want to be working in energy storage find out who is who within energy storage, find out where they're speaking at, find out where they're attending, you know, find out what webinars are there. You know, there's a quick Google search. You can find out what's live, you know, yeah. connect with recruiters like us in the space. And, you know, there's other recruiters out there, but connect with recruiters like us in the space and, you know, seek advice. You know, it's okay to ask for help. Um, seek advice and speak to specialists within the sector they might not be able to directly help you as is the case with us many times, but they might give you some useful collateral yeah. or point you in the direction of a great book to pick up. Um, yeah, you've just got to do a bit of soul searching, I think, find out where do you want to be and then go back to basics, you know, rehash and, and, and revamp your CV if it needs to. Um, put yourself in the thick of things, you know, go and speak to companies, go and, you know, map out, the 10 companies that really stand out to you and approach the HR teams, approach the CEOs directly, see if they'll entertain a conversation, you know, 
put yourself in the thick of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's that proactive thing, which goes back proactive, to the point of yeah. the people that we're looking for are those who don't say, nah, I've got no experience. Exactly. Unless they put, it's those that do say, oh, I'm going to learn this, I'm going to read this, I'm going to watch that, I'm going to listen to here, I'm going to have that conversation. Exactly. Uh, and going back to the point around skills there's so many skills are transferable but sometimes you've got to connect the dots for people right it's like you know if you are a first class project manager and you've done that in telecoms well why can't you do an ev charge infrastructure why yeah. can't you do that in solar and storage deployment you know there, there's obviously bits of gaps that you need to fill in or learn and, mm-hmm. and, and evolve but essentially the skill set of project management and the skill set of business development or the skill set of leadership are, are transferable exactly. um, it's drawing those bits out from your experience say look this is what i've done and why it's applicable Mm-hmm. And these are the bits, obviously, I'm, I, I need to fill in. But I've already been driving an EV, like you say. I've already been, you know, listening to this podcast for so long. I've already been attending these events. We've been doing these things. And those are the proactive steps that people should be chain, uh, taking in order to become visible. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you are looking to get into the sector, those are some, obviously, you can reach out to, to Steve or look at the, the various Hyperion and Fully Charged websites for some some content and some, uh, some, some ideas. But, yeah, get out there and be bold. Because the market's fantastic, right? The market's fantastic. Just get out there, put yourself in the thick of it. As I mentioned, you know, it's often difficult for many of the people at the level that we hire at. But, you know, if you've got a bit of spare time, volunteer your experience, you know, just, just anything that you can do to be close to the sector, do it. You know, there's there's a lot of events out there which are free. Um and again, we'll probably share some of them over the next couple of weeks because we're, we're actually exhibiting yeah, yeah. and hosting at some of them. Um, but yeah, there's, there's there's a lot of online conferences. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of webinars. There's a lot of seminars. There's all kinds out there that's available. It's just knowing where to look. To look for it, yeah. yeah. So if you are, from a Canada's perspective, if you are in a leadership capacity and you want to find out some more, then reach out to one of the Hyperion Executive Search team. If you're a, not a rookie, but you're in a sort of mid to senior level, then obviously reach out to, to Steve and the team at Fully Charged Recruitment to, to get that support and we'll certainly give you whatever guidance and, and things that we can. From a client perspective, so there's so much also that there's it's not obvious unless you do this day in and day out. I think that's something that people don't often realize is that, you know, most people, particularly founders, probably never recruited in their lives. Or if they have, it's been occasionally. And this is stuff that we do literally every day for, for years, which is why we've got the gray hair, right? So, um, yeah, so it, 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 there's, there's so much that if you just reach out to people, and obviously from ourselves, if you're if you're building your teams, reach out and we, we can have a conversation with you and help you with diversity. We can help you with pulling, bringing people from ex, you know from from other industries. We can help you relocate people around the world. We can we can provide all these things. So it's a little bit of a pitch, but I don't I make no apologies for that. It's we're great at what we do. So Steve, thanks very much for joining us Pleasure. on the episode. Uh, as I say, you'll find Steve's details on the episode page and of course on LinkedIn. Reach out if there's anything we can do to support your growth as a business or your journey as an individual. But thanks very much for listening.